I'm Dr. Darrell Bigner, Director of the Preston Robert Tisch Brain Tumor Center and Director of the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation Institute at Duke University Medical Center. It's my great privilege to introduce four members of the Brain Tumor Center who will tell you about one of the most promising new treatments for glioplastoma multiforme I've seen in my 40 plus years of research in the field. Glioblastoma multiforme is the most common malignant brain tumor and the most lethal. This new treatment, utilizing a genetically modified polio virus, was perfected in laboratories at Duke, and we've just opened a clinical trial uh, to which we are now enrolling patients. Response in the first few patients treated has been truly remarkable. The first presenter is Dr. Matthias Gromeyer, Associate Professor of Neurosurgery and Molecular Genetics. Dr. Gromeyer is one of our brightest basic scientists who engineered the polio virus in his laboratory. He'll describe the basic science involved and how it's translated into patients. The second presenter is Dr. John Sampson. Dr. Sampson is the Robert and Gloria Wilkins Professor of Neurosurgery. He's one of the most outstanding neurosurgeons in the country. Dr. Sampson is world-renowned in convection-enhanced delivery of agents to the brain. This simply means the insertion of catheters into the brain so the agent can be delivered directly to the tumor. Dr. Sampson will describe how he goes about placing the catheters, how the agent is delivered to the tumor, and the imaging required to confirm that the agent gets to the right place in the brain for maximum effectiveness. Following Dr. Sampson is Dr. Anique Desjardins. Dr. Desjardins is the principal investigator for the poliovirus clinical trial. She's an internationally recognized medical neuro-oncologist who provides the post-surgical care of our patients. She'll describe how the treatment works in patients, their medical care, survival, and quality of life while on treatment. Finally, you'll hear from Dr. Henry Friedman. Dr. Friedman is the James B. Powell, Jr. Professor of Neuro-Oncology, uh, Deputy Director of our Brain Tumor Center, and our Senior Medical Clinician. Dr. Friedman is one of the finest clinicians in the field of adult and pediatric neuro-oncology. He's internationally recognized as one of the leaders in the development of novel therapeutic trials for malignant brain tumors. I hope these presentations will create the same excitement we have for the future of this new treatment. We believe discoveries such as this one mark a true turning point in what we can offer brain tumor patients and demonstrate that at Duke there's hope. Hi, uh, I'm Matthias Gormeyer of the Preston Robert Tisch Brain Tumor Center at Duke University. Why do we use poliovirus for cancer therapy? The main reason for this has to do with the receptor the virus uses. Just like a key and lock mechanism, viruses use receptors to infect cells. The poliovirus receptor is interesting because it is abnormally present on tumor cells. This means that most tumor cells are infected and killed by polio. Before we could use this principle in patients, we had to make absolutely sure it could be done safely. In partnership with the National Cancer Institute, we performed over 10 years of research to optimize a strategy to safely target brain tumors with poliovirus. We started with the polio Sabin vaccine. This is familiar to many as the vaccine given on a sugar cube. For added safety, we spliced a piece of genetic code from a common cold causing rhinovirus into the vaccine virus. This makes the engineered virus unable to grow in the normal brain. We learned much about how our strategy may work in patients from research in brain tumor cell cultures and in animals. It is clear that, in order to work, the virus must kill tumor cells. When surgeons infuse our virus in patients' brain tumors, such killing is likely to occur and may reduce the number of tumor cells. However, we believe that the key to therapy is the response of the patient's own immune system. Our immune system is designed to recognize virus infection and it may respond vigorously to the infusion of polio into tumors and help to fight the cancer. Unraveling the immune mechanisms that are at work is a major goal of our current research. 
I'm Dr. John Sampson, a neurosurgeon at Duke, and I've been working in the laboratory with Dr. Gromeyer to help develop the delivery systems for the polio virus over the last decade. What's important about delivering this virus is that it's delivered in such a way that it covers the entire tumor. In order to do that, we've used a software program that we've developed over the years that allows us to take computer software algorithms and show exactly where the virus will be delivered. We then use a tracer when we deliver the virus to confirm that we are delivering the virus exactly where it needs to go. The procedure itself is very simple and done under a local anesthetic. We numb up a small area of the scalp, usually less than a few millimeters, and then make an access point into the skull that is pain-free. That allows us to deliver this small catheter that's only about a millimeter in width directly to the site where we know the optimal delivery of the virus will occur. Then we can follow the virus's delivery over time and we can see where the tracer and the virus goes in order to kill the tumor cells most effectively. I'm very excited about this approach to new tumor therapy. I think it's going to be one of the most exciting things we've developed over the last decade. Hi, I am Dr. Annick Desjardins, the principal investigator of the poliovirus clinical trial. The poliovirus trial is available for glioblastoma patient with tumor regrowth. For a patient to qualify for the study, the tumor needs to be located close to the surface of the brain, be between one and five centimeter in size and away from the ventricles. Once a patient qualifies for the trial, a small tube, a catheter, is inserted into the tumor and the modified poliovirus is infused over 6.5 hours. Patients are afterward followed without any additional treatment. Here are MRI images of our first patient treated on the poliovirus trial. We can see her brain prior to tumor regrowth and her MRI once the tumor came back. Next, we have an MRI picture showing the catheter into the tumor and the distribution of the poliovirus into the tumor. Close follow-up afterward showed a slight increase in size of the tumor due to the reaction to the poliovirus, followed over time by a decrease in size of the nodule. A last MRI in February showed only small residual tumor. Our quality of life is excellent, and she is an active student in nursing school and is clinically normal now, nine months after poliovirus treatment. There have been five patients treated, but only two have been followed sufficiently long enough for response evaluation. Then they are eight and nine months post-treatment and doing well radiographically and clinically. I am Dr. Henry Friedman. I'm in charge of the adult and pediatric neuro-oncology program focusing on the medical aspects of care of brain tumor patients being treated at Duke. There is no question that the poliovirus work is by far the most exciting therapeutic strategy I have seen developed in my 31 years at the Preston Robert Tisch Brain Tumor Center. This approach brings forward the chance to impact on patients in the very worst category we have right now, patients who have been treated with bevacizumab or Avastin and their tumors have proven refractory to that therapy. There is no treatment strategy that will work for those patients and the entire neuro-oncology field is desperate for a regimen that will benefit these patients. The poliovirus work in its preliminary studies looks like it will do exactly that will be effective in bevacizumab refractory glioblastoma multiform, and of course, in patients with other types of cancer, such as prostate, melanoma, pancreas, lung, and even breast cancer, whose tumors are sensitive to it as well. These would be landmark advances in neuro-oncology and cancer research in general. It is clear that the receptor for this strategy is on other cancers as well, which may benefit from the poliovirus strategy beyond just those who have brain tumors, we believe it will be effective for brain metastases from systemic tumors, such as breast and lung cancer and melanoma. There is no effective therapy for such brain metastases, and there are more than 150,000 cases each year. In our current environment, where therapy is limited by the resources one has to devote to the preclinical and clinical translation of these efforts, financial support for this work is critical. We are very effective, and we have the fuel to move forward with new therapeutic programs, and the fuel is, of course, money. The philanthropic dollars that come into the center drive our program, 
and were responsible for bevacizumab being introduced into the neuro-oncology arena and also played a major role in temozolomide being introduced as a new therapeutic agent. And it is the same kind of philanthropy that will prove critical in what we believe to be our most important advancement in the field, this genetically modified polio virus. We ask for your support. We know it will translate into a longer survival and better quality of life for patients with these tumors with poor prognoses. With your help, working together as a team, we can make a major advance that will impact on this generation and generations to follow.